Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach Meeting for the 26th of March, 2020. Um, let's review the agenda and then work through it. So I had put on the agenda Zoom accounts as a possible topic. Uh, assuming that that's one for discussion. Jenkins Area Meetups, Jenkins Roadmap, Google Summer of Code, and case studies uh, poss as possibles. Are there other topics or any of those topics that should be deleted? I've got a couple of topics. Um, just one is I wanted to just highlight um, the Twitter analytics and what I think is a, a next step we can take. And um, then I noticed as Jackie's here, um, I wanted to highlight a CDF ambassador program and also kick off a discussion because uh, I've been looking at it and I think there's some scope for kind of taking what we had as the Jenkins ambassador and kind of evolving it to be part of CDF ambassador. But there's a few decisions we need to make or discuss. Um, but yeah. we, might, we might not have time today. I don't know. Go ahead, Jackie. Yeah, I think maybe that that we could do like a separate call on um, on what we wanted because I know Jenkins has uh, amb an ambassador program, and I'm going to assume that maybe Spinnaker and um, I can't remember, uh, I, maybe Jenkins X already has them. So I know we had discussed figuring out like how do we identify the ambassadors by specialty. Um, but I, 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 yeah, let's, let's have a separate discuss. Let's table that one and have a separate discussion. I'll set it up. Um, cause I do want to get, I want to figure out how do we really leverage and make this a robust program. Um, and I don't want to step on the community's toes. I actually want to integrate them into it. So let me, I'll set that up right now. Okay. Yeah. I think that sounds good. It's yeah, probably a wider topic than we can cover. Can we also get uh, add to the list to get an update on the we talked about a store and getting uh, codes to give out to people when they do something good and yeah so I oh, sorry Marky I think I might have missed you um, but Jackie, I sent that can you hear me rather we can we can hear you just great I just wanted to gather oh. all the all the topics and sort oh, them God, before we actually execute. <laughs> No okay, problem. Sorry. I'm just I'm just trying to be because we've got Tracy only for a limited amount of time. I wanted to be sure we get the hot topics on the top of the stack. That one I think we could we can we can certainly do it, but it, it would be okay if we did it later in the meeting, even if Tracy yeah. is not here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, CDF you have to store. Drop off at the same time. Oh, you do. Okay. Well, so then yeah. then all right. So that that helps guide <laughs> the prioritization. Okay. So Jackie, you you win the prioritization challenge. Good. Okay. Um, are there other topics before we get, before we go crisply diving into specifics? Okay. Uh, it's a link in the uh, topic uh, to the bottom of the agenda. Okay, great. All right, and I think we can sort them so that we've we've already covered CDF ambassador. So. Do we take CDF store first, then Zoom accounts, then Twitter analytics, and let's go onward? Yep. Okay, so um, CDF store, Jackie? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I created some discount codes, or Pinnacle already created some discount codes. I sent them over to Tracy, um, but I think that I need, uh, let, let's talk about it more, because I, I think if I need to have them create more for you guys, just let me know. And then I can send over the, the discount codes and you guys manage them. Yeah, I think that's a good start. So Maki, um, yeah, I think Oleg and I have in our inbox some codes. What do you need? Like, is there someone you want to go ahead and send that to? How do we want to manage it? Uh, I had one person that I wanted to send just one to, uh, but maybe in terms of processes, maybe we should have a, I don't know, a spreadsheet where we can mark them off and like who you, you who, who took it in terms of which one of the advocacy people took it and then who did you give it to and then we mark it off. I don't know, sort of use the honor system yeah. on that. I don't, I think that might be the best way to do it. That's how we do it in, in the Kubernetes community. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. I can, um, I think I, I only had like 10 cent created, but um, I'll have Pinnacle create more. And basically the way it works, I don't know if I reviewed this with you guys yet, but basically like say you wanted a pair of Spinnaker socks, 
uh, you would just give them the code for socks and it's a one-time use only and then they go and use it and it gets shipped directly to them. So we cover the cost of the socks and the cost of the shipping. Okay. So I'll so just I, create, oh, go do ahead. Do you have something, Jackie? Or is it like, Marky, if we just, do you have an existing spreadsheet we could just use if it's something like other communities, we could just mimic that? I do think, uh, I don't personally have a, are you, was that a question for me? Trish? Yes, I was just asking if you, if you already had a template, we could just adopt I could, and I could easily. I, I could I could easily make it up and then I'll share it out. Uh, I will make it only available to the people that I sent to, so you'll get it to your email so we don't open it up to the community. Uh, yeah. I could have that done by the end of the day. Oh, so okay. I already I'll, I'll have the codes in. Oh, you have one, sorry. I, ha I, have, I already have an Excel sheet that um, Pinnacle shared with me, so I'll share it with you guys. And then I think all we need to do is probably add a couple more columns to like, who received it, who gave it away, uh, and then, but I'll just share it with you guys right now. And then what I'll do is I'll have Pinnacle continue adding the discount codes to that same Excel sheet. And then uh, you guys have access to it. And then yeah. it'll, like you said, it'll be an honor system and we manage it that way. I'll write up a document that I'll put somewhere that we can look and you can see how you actually use it. So we just don't assume. Yeah, it. and that's what I was gonna say. It's like, do we wanna put some guidelines around um, who we give it to and tracking and all that kind of stuff, so. I'll create a document and I'll make it editable with the, the, the team here and then we can go from there. Yep. Mm, so I won't okay. give anything, I won't give any of the codes out until everything is all agreed upon. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. One comment about uh, the pack. So my understanding is that now we use the code. So basically we send a pair of socks uh, to whomever receives it, right? Uh, it would be nice if we could uh, use uh, maybe a pack. So let's say socks, couple of stickers and a kind of thank you message or letter. Uh, because uh, it would uh, be a bit more efficient. So well, do we have uh, an opportunity to have something like that in principle or in does um, it come? Uh, we, let's talk about maybe creating a separate kit for that um, mm -hmm. uh, because I, and then we can, what we, what I've talked to Pinnacle about is actually creating a code and basically that code is for like, I'm calling it like the ambassador kit, just as an example. Um, mm -hmm. And then it comes in a box that's all branded with our design um and then like you said it, it has stickers it has socks so just let me know so that we can get it created because i think that if we do a bunch of codes um that might just be a little bit more tedious i think the handwritten note um, might be a challenge because it's basically people in a warehouse putting all this stuff together and shipping it out yeah, so it's so not part of their offering service to write a handwritten note yeah, handwritten um, notice not something uh, required. So, for example, we can just uh, come up with a letter on our, uh, our own. Uh, get it yeah, printed. maybe we and come up with something generic that they can print and just send out. Yeah. yeah. I approach it. I'm going to suggest something slightly different. When we award the code, um, we just do a nice kind of thank you. And I think we're biasing here to just keep it as automated as possible. So, while I do think handwritten mm -hmm. notes have a nice touch and even printed messages. I think the more we can make it efficient and keep doing it, the better. Yeah. So uh, yeah, maybe it's something like Jenkins contributor certificate or whatever. So you can put it on a wall, <laughs> but yeah, I agree that uh, you can basically do deliver it separately without a perk. So just PDF you can print. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, anything else on CDF store? Nothing for me, thank you everyone. Okay, next topic then, Zoom accounts. Um, I said I would follow up on this, I haven't and I still have it on my list so I will try to do that. And thank you Mark in the meantime for giving us a stopgap solution by using your own personal Zoom. You got it. Okay, so. so Tracy, 
uh, sorry, what's the issue with the Zoom account? Do you guys need access to like the CDF Zoom account so that we could schedule these meetings? We have access, but there seems to be a lot more overlap now. Um, and so we run into clashes. So we wanted to have an independent Jenkins Zoom account, mm -hmm. um, we just use for yeah, all the SIG meetings, GSOC. And we know that okay. it, we're not, we don't have to look at the CDF calendar when we're scheduling. Yeah. Okay, got it. And we had some cases when uh, the account was locked, even if there was no official meeting on the CDF calendar. For example, it was a case for Jenkins Online Meetup one month ago. And basically, I finally had to interrupt the meeting because uh, yeah, we had an announced online meetup with people are waiting. Uh, yes, okay. I feel bad about that, but uh, yeah, we have no way to coordinate uh, access to a single account reliably right now. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll also follow up with uh, Dan mm -hmm. to yeah. see if we can come up with a solution for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If I leave that with you, Jackie, okay. you're probably better place to chase up than than me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll chase. Great. All right. Thanks. Uh, I assume that covers Zoom accounts. Next was Twitter Analytics. So, uh, Tracy, I believe you had that. Yes. Um, yeah. So I know this is something Mark had brought up when he first became a contributor, which is basically, you know, how can we get feedback for the tweets we're putting out? No active. And I recently heard that um, so analytics uh, does have a way where you can count in to, show, um, you know, the number of impressions per tweet and um, all sorts of different kind of analytics info. So the categories, and I think I shared a chart where I think the right one is, is called an organic analyst to have access to all the data, but you can't necessarily run campaigns and it's a bit ad centric. And long story short, I thought uh, what we should basically do is have every Twitter contributor who has to tweet deck should also be given access to um, the Twitter analytics. And then I know uh, Tyler had some concerns in the past that, you know, it's important these analytics are not used uh, by specific companies or uh, they, they're always shared with the community and that data is, is kind of made open and the output is used to help the community. So with that caveat that people have that responsibility with the data, we then give people access and then maybe we add it monthly to this meeting to look at that data and draw some conclusions and share that with the community. Yeah. And I guess alternate approach would be to just have a public uh, statistics instance, let's say something like Grimoire Lab, um, but it's a much more complicated way and just for reference, a thing I used to do um, is I used to bug Tyler every month to download the monthly report and then Olivier would save it somewhere and then I would do some analysis, but it's, it was just too kind of heavyweight and it relied on kind of me bugging Tyler. Um, so I think this would be kind of a, a better setup where people can go in, look at their tweets, see what's being effective, see what's getting, you know, spreading the word and what's just kind of being ignored. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so it, I, I like the idea because it, it at least feels like it's lightweight for my benefit. I can decide if I'm phrasing things, if certain phrasing is getting better traction than other. It doesn't give us a particularly long-term archive for it, but I don't object to that. Yeah, I don't know if access to that means we could download the reports ourselves, but we can find out. Okay, um, so if folks are fine with that, I will, I can just ping Tyler and just when he can get around to it, if he can take a look and try adding us and then we can see how it goes. Yeah, it would be nice. Speaking of publicly accessible uh, Twitter analytics, we just hit uh, 40,000 followers uh, one week ago or so. So I'm not sure whether we need to celebrate it, but uh, it's definitely a quite good number. I think that should something that should be like a tweet and it's well formulated, nice hashtags in there and sent out. I think that'll generate a lot of buzz. Okay. The, yeah. So if, if somebody is ready to do that, I'm perfectly fine. I'll take I that still, action item. 
Uh, if and if you want, you can also tweet about uh, fifteen thousand uh, stars. Uh, yeah, or I can do it tomorrow. Can you send? Can them. you can you just shoot me a direct message with those numbers, like the forty thousand okay. and the fifteen thousand? I'll get something together and then I'll put it in. Uh, I'll okay. put it in our uh, the advocacy getter, and if everybody approves, then I'll get it shot out today. Okay. Yeah, maybe tweet that uh, today and uh, Jenkins maybe next week. Let's see. Yeah, nice numbers. Excellent. Anything else on Twitter analytics, Tracy? Yep. No. Okay. So next topic we had. I had put Jenkins area meetups there. Oleg, is there anything you wanted to review with us on Jenkins area meetups? Um. Yeah, so I'm doing some uh, small progress with regards to meetups in Europe. And I reached out to organizers um, uh, to uh, get feedback whether somebody is interested to organize them. Uh, we are planning one online meetup maybe in May uh, with Scandinavian maintainers. Uh, so there is some progress, but uh, it's, uh, the progress is definitely uh, slower than I would like to. And the separate stream of work for me, it's something we already discussed in the SIG, uh, having uh, an announcement for meetup organizers about uh, uh, <clears throat> about COVID-19 situation and recommendation to go to this show. And basically offering help to use our existing uh, framework because we have uh, Jenkins online meetup. Uh, we can host meetups if needed through Zoom. So if uh, somebody wants to organize online meetup, we can help them by providing platform. Uh, so I have an action item to write it down, but after that, uh, probably we will need uh, help from CDF to send a message to all meetup organizers, because uh, without CDF, we have no permission to do that. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part, even if I make you guys uh, co-organizers. So yeah, just uh, let me know what you need me to send out and I can do that for yep. you guys. Yeah, and I think it will be what um, mm -hmm. I know CDF, are, we're having lots of conversations about, you know, virtual strategy. So I think this will fit in really nicely to that. So yeah, I'll like mm -hmm. just send it over to Jackie. So she's, she's on Yeah, here. that's something that's like, uh, I'm trying to figure out how do I start prepping content to share with the meetup folks so that they can host online versus in, yeah. in person. So yeah, just let me know how. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while we're here, Marky, uh, I'm waiting for your abstract uh, uh, for Kubernetes and Jenkins online meetup. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna write that down. Okay. Great. Oh. Mark, not on this topic, but I, I just remembered another topic I want to sneak in if I can. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so this is uh, just a very early, uh, so something we're doing in CDF now is um, there's a, a kind of subcommittee of the outreach committee, which is focused on projects. And one thing we're driving there is like themes around the newsletter. So I, I've got on the hook to create a GitHub repo, which sort of sort of outlines like, you know, April's theme will be this, May's theme will be that. But then what we're looking for is folks to write specific articles and suggest future themes. So long story short, um, I think in May, the theme is going to be ML ops. And I wanted to see if we could find somebody who could write an article on Jenkins and ML ops. And if there was somebody who was running like a GSOC project, which had ML ops in it. And I don't know if there's anyone in the room like that, <laughs> but the yeah, long story short, if there was some Jenkins and ML ops angle that we could do as an article, I wanted to just pre see that in people's heads so we could find some authors or something exciting. We could contribute mm -hmm. to that newsletter. I may know somebody. Yeah, and uh, there might be weekly meetings uh, with regards to that. So let's see whether we could do something. You're also ambiguous with the May thing. That's great. I love that. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, we, we have even an organization which targets that. Uh, so let's see whether we could facilitate it. 
Yeah, so just early, I'll have better dates and I'll soon have something we can reference, but I just wanted to see that so people to keep in mind is, yeah. Um, okay, so Mark, is it fine if I add an action item for you for that? Great, all right. Anything else on CDF theme of the month? Okay, Jenkins roadmap, Oleg? Okay. So, quick update about Jenkins roadmap. Uh, firstly, it's going to happen. Uh, yesterday, we had a Jenkins governance meeting where we approved publishing of the work in progress roadmap. So, I'm assembling the pull request uh, together and I hope uh, to finish it uh, by tomorrow. And it means that we will be able to publish it and then uh, work with all special interest groups uh, to get their items. And since we are the special interest group meeting, um, I would like to bring uh, it up to everyone uh, to understand uh, what we would put uh, to the roadmap as advocacy and outreach. So right now uh, I put uh, pro all programs there like JSOC, JSOC, uh, the potentially community bridge, Oktoberfest for the future. Uh, but uh, are there any other topics we would like to highlight um, in the roadmap? Do you have outreach in there? I'd love to have that, if, even if we can't necessarily commit. Okay, uh, not now, I, I can put it. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah, I can put outreach. So for us, outreach is rather a problem with financing of this program, but uh, if you can find sponsorship, why not? Yeah, CDF can sponsorship. They could have sponsored it last time. I just think Jenkins wasn't ready with mentors. Yeah, so I guess we can safely assume that we won't be ready with mentors for the summer season. Uh, we can make a call uh, to double check, but yeah, everybody who's interested in mentorship is right now at uh, the JSOC. Yeah, I think the summer mm -hmm. deadlines have already passed anyway, so it's the, mm -hmm. the next cycle okay. for one. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll treat you winter then. Okay, so it basically summarizes what we do with outreach, at least with community events. Uh, do we want to do something for advocacy or I talked to Alyssa about what she's doing on case studies potentially. Yeah, so I'm happy to put uh, case studies uh, on the roadmap. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to limit number of items for each project. But right now I can put whatever we have in mind and then we will sort it out. Yeah, I'd say something like potentially the ambassador program as a, mm -hmm. a next if we want to put that on there. CDF ambassador program, right? Yeah, well, Jenkins evolution of the ambassador program to CDF, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But if that's too fuzzy for now, we can leave it off as well. Well, it will be a living document, so it's not something we need to propose all topics by the next week or something like that. So we will be able to run at the topics later. Okay. So once we have a roadmap in place, um, I think that it will take one to two months uh, to have it finalized and to make it uh, get it announced. Once we have it announced, uh, it's definitely something that we could promote through CDF resources as well. Because I think it would be a, a major milestone for the Jenkins project to have something like public roadmap in place. We have never had it before. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else on, on the Jenkins roadmap, Oleg? I'm waiting for feedback from everyone in the pull request, especially uh, from ones who want to propose their own uh, roadmap items. So, so just as my, my, my note, the platform special interest group met this morning and brought in six or seven or eight different items, most of them already on the roadmap, the draft that Oleg had proposed, but they agreed that they were good roadmap items. They included things like specific platforms, 
specific initiatives around JDKs, uh, things that I think the community will find both interesting and useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we right. can uh, go through the brain dump stage and then uh, we will align it. That's why I put one to two months before we do final approval and consider it as published one. Great. Shall we go on to Google Summer of Code then? Oh, and Tracy, I think you and Jackie said that you needed to drop off. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, I do. But um, I'll follow up with um, you guys on the Summer of Code because uh, I need to get caught up on how do I help out as a um, admin. And I think uh, Tracy might have said that we would sync with Oleg. So just FYI on that, because I it, on the CDF side, um, the ball's been dropped <laughs> on this program. So we need to, you know, get it up and going and start helping folks. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I had to say about that. But I got to drop, so mm -hmm. I'll follow up with you, Oleg. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, the, the, uh, chats on uh, CDF Slack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so speaking of chat, uh, Marky, are you in the CDF or admin and mentor uh, chat now? I guess CDF? Not. For CDF? CDF? No. Okay. Yeah, I just asked uh, whether we should invite uh, Jenkins or admins and mentors there, because right now it's only me in this uh, channel. It was created by Tracy yesterday, uh, just uh, to facilitate communication on the work admin side. Is it a private channel? Yes, it's a private channel. Well, if you can invite me, I'll, I'll definitely go yeah. there. Uh, there is public JSOC channel, uh, basically equivalent of our public JSOC channel. And there is also a mentor uh, channel, which is basically equivalent of our uh, mentor and or admin uh, mailing list at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I, did, I, did, I know about the public JSOC one. I'm in that one. But the private ones or the mentor one, I did not know about that. Okay. I feel yeah, there's a uh, lot of we're crossing a lot of wires in doing that. Uh, just, uh, yeah. yeah, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. For me, focus until next Tuesday in the is drinking juice soak. But uh, I'm trying to help uh, way, when I have some brain wipe. If you need me to help in, in the CDF one, I'll, I'll help you there if you need help. Okay. So let's move uh, to JSOC. Yes, please. Okay, so for JSOC, one major update. So we have uh, regular meetings, so I will just uh, provide a quick summary. Uh, there will be changes in the timeline. So coding period will uh, start uh, in June. Uh, community bonding will start in May. Basically, it's back to the common schedule because uh, this year the plan was to start a bit earlier. Uh, what doesn't change is student application deadline. So it's still... Uh, uh, March uh, 31st, so five days. Uh, on the Jenkins side, we've got a number of uh, proposals. We've got a number of strong proposals, and hopefully we'll have a great JSOC. Uh, obviously, COVID-19 situation also applies, so we've been asked uh, by uh, Google to increase uh, mentorship capacity and uh, to increase redundancy in all projects. So what we decided on the work admin side is uh, to target uh, three mentors per project as a default, instead of two what we had uh, last year. And yeah, it will be a part of our student selection uh, part uh, in April. Uh, regarding the rest, yeah, we got uh, a lot of applications. You can find uh, out some uh, using uh, the public materials. We have a uh, Google Drive where we try to reference proposals. I cannot say uh, how many proposals we've got uh, through official channels, but yeah, we've got uh, a good number there already. Okay, any questions, comments? No, oh. everybody on uh, this call already participates in JSOC. Yeah, so, I uh, think we may have uh, we may have a little bit of concern with the, the Jenkins X projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's some internal stuff going on. I don't know. I just found out about that yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm forcing them to give me some more information because I find it extremely unsettling uh, from a, for students that have submitted proposals for this and have showed interest.
to just have them do you know proposals and then pull the rug out from under them i find that not acceptable yeah if uh, there is a cancellation we want to know about it by tomorrow end of the day that's what i've said i've said that to kara and oscar and i said i need to know this now like i i told oscar i need to know it by today well uh do we have um, any uh, applications to that particular uh, proposal we have two, three that have sent them to me personally and i was in the process of telling them to submit their draft to the uh google mm -hmm. but now i don't want to do that because that's just not okay to have them send it and then well i uh, feel bad already that they've worked on something that it's, may not uh, Okay, so firstly, if they already have drafts, it's better that they submit them, because uh, uh, while the proposal is in draft, you, you can cancel it. Uh, this first item. Second item, we need uh, to push uh, proposals to draft or to discussions to it on the website. Okay. If there is no certainty whether they happen, uh, we remove them from published state immediately. I'll, I'll have them submit them today. One of the things that I find concerning is, well, I've done reviews. All of my reviews are now dependent upon James Scotchin to do a review. I did not, I was not aware of that until yesterday, that he has to approve everything. What? That's what I found out yesterday. Uh, yeah, that's, we, I will I follow up on that internally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I'm okay with that. I just. I didn't know that beforehand. I didn't know about that, even though we had some discussions specifically related to that. Uh, okay, so thanks for the heads up. Uh, I will follow up internally, but yeah, I can comment on the situation because I also don't have all the information. Great, okay. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. So I am going to do a, a Oleg. Oleg and I had a conversation earlier today that highlighted that we could benefit by more more mentors in a number of places. I'm going to put out some attempts on social media to encourage additional mentors to subscribe to, in my case, the Git plugin project ideas. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's a general technique we should consider inviting more people who are contributors because with COVID-19 we need more yeah. more depth. We talked to with mentors about it several times. Great. I wasn't pushing it too much in the mailing list again because of COVID-19 because at some point uh, people were not uh, really sure whether JSOC is uh, going to happen. Now I believe that it's going to happen. Uh, we still need to do some promotion but Yes, right now we mostly target the mentors for the projects where we don't have enough mentorship capacity because uh, yeah, we can uh, do a final call for student applications, but let's be honest, uh, there is quite low probability that a student comes out of the blue five days before the deadline with a great proposal which we are able to review and accept and then which we will accept. It might be possible for projects where we don't have good applications already. So I'm writing some messaging. Sorry, I'm behind all action items. Uh, and I will be posting it in the mailing list, but specifically for proposals where we don't have applications right now. Okay, so I'm not sure I understood that last, that the, the subtleties of that last comment. So if we don't have proposals for a particular idea, we want to encourage proposals in those areas. I, could you yes. clarify for me? Okay. So yeah, the idea that uh, if we already have applications in particular areas, uh, when we internally consider that these applications uh, is something we would like to have, so it's not something we can discuss publicly. But uh, yeah, obviously, um, org admins and mentors. Uh, already started reviewing proposals, so they have uh, their own preference list. And uh, during the next five years, we will be just doing this ranking uh, and making decisions. So, uh, 
the current uh, feasible uh, strategy is to encourage proposals in the areas where we do not have applications. Got it. So that uh, we may uh, get applications there, and uh, then if we have additional mentorship capacity or additional slots, uh, it becomes more feasible there. Yeah, if somebody wants uh, to come up with proposal, any project ID is fine, but uh, it's a question about what we promote. Because for example, we can promote a uh, machine learning project now, please apply, but how many students uh, did you already have, Mark? Something, something like 16? You Too said? many students. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Uh, yeah, what's uh, right. the point of promoting that? Yeah, right. that one is, is not, let's close that one off. Great, got it. I understand. Yeah. Okay, there are areas where we're rich and areas where we aren't as rich, and so we want to we want to spread the wealth. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's something like that. All right. Anything else about JSOC? Okay. okay. Then we can move on. Uh, I have I've, too many JSOC meetings. Yeah. So I propose we delete the topic that we had case studies with Alyssa. She's not available. She could talk about it the next time she's here. Uh, let's go yeah. to LinkedIn account. Uh, yeah. One thing before we move on, Mark, would you be able to update statuses of Jenkins X uh, project ideas? What do you mean update statuses? So push them from published to draft or maybe even to pending discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Let me talk to Oscar. Uh, the Kara is offline already, but let me talk to Oscar, mm -hmm. and that'll decide. It will get pushed to one of those. That where is after will be dependent upon that conversation. But I will have the PR in today for both of those. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so LinkedIn. So yeah. Just to summarize from, uh, yeah, I'll probably share the screen if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you see my screen? Do, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, um, regarding LinkedIn, uh, historically we have um, an organization there. KK has created it maybe in 2010 or something like that. Uh, so I'll just open my profile. Uh, yeah, so there is a Jenkins project organization there, uh, but uh, this organization historically wasn't really maintained. So if you go there, you can see that uh, basically there is no pause, uh, well, no nothing. Uh, um, and uh, my proposal would be to actually use it as an additional vehicle for outreach because you can open uh, the number of followers and it's something like, uh, yeah, uh, almost for southern followers. And in LinkedIn, uh, we can actually uh, do a good outreach. For example, uh, if we talk about the Google Summer of Code and about other items, well, the ship has sailed for this year, but still uh, by doing uh, LinkedIn promotion, we can uh, have additional impact. Or we could just configure EFFT and just uh, forward uh, tweets there. Again, additional outreach almost for free. So I spent some time, I, uh, I got approval from the governance meeting yesterday for me to get admin permissions there. I got admin permissions there because apparently AKK was owner, so I, I got it quickly. And uh, now I just have some ideas what to do, but uh, these ideas are pretty straightforward, I would say. So just to do some facelift to um, update obsolete text. For example, uh, until yesterday, the page still include slave in the description. Uh, yeah, so minor thing, but it's fixed. Uh, we could uh, set up some repos. One of the ways is to just approach Twitter contact management thing. Another approach is just configure EFFT or something like that. To be honest, my preference would be towards that because uh, you have limited capacity. Unless somebody is a strong LinkedIn fan, because in my case, I open LinkedIn once per week or something like that. Um, but yeah, we could definitely improve uh, outreach there. 
Also, we can encourage contributors to highlight their affiliation. Uh, so, if you go, you can see that uh, there are uh, basically people who highlighted that they are Jenkins contributors. For example, you can take Mark as an example. And uh, here, if you go to Mark's profile, if you don't mind, Mark, mm. here you can see that he's a the Jenkins project contributor uh, uh, for six years. And he does a freelance job as a documentation officer. Or, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what how to class, classify that one because I, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not really helpful in terms of LinkedIn, but well, something. Uh -huh. Still, it uh, can raise visibility of some roles, of some things we are doing in the community. It can help uh, contributors. Also, you can now refer Mark as a Jenkins contributor if you want. Uh, I had no idea you could do this. My mind is absolutely blown right now. Right. See, and that's that was the astonishment for me was how many people congratulated me. Oh, congrats on your new role. I've been doing Jenkins. Oh, yeah. that's right. I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, and I I'm, actually I'm, did the same uh, unintentionally because I had a Jenkins board member to the list. I forgot to uncheck uh, send a notification. And I've got something like 100 congratulations, a bunch of can't respond, uh, can't congratulations from people. Also, right. I, I'm not uh, removing chats, but I doubt that there is anything except uh, headhunters there. <laughs> but okay. So, still, uh, LinkedIn is something we could uh, use as an additional engine. Why not? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was impressed. I'm actually going to use LinkedIn as as one of my attempts to get more Git plugin um, mentors for GSOC because I think yeah. it's an, an interestingly fluid place to to encourage people to interact with us. Exactly, and uh, actually there is also content happening about uh, Jenkins. For example, at some point I discovered a blog post. Um, yeah, so you just go to content. Uh, okay. Same problem as everywhere. Googling for Jenkins is terrible. Uh, but yeah, for example, the post from Marky. Uh, then there are other blog po posts, etc., where you can find some additional information. Why not? We could also repost it. As you can see, I have been using it a lot. <laughs> uh, because you have EFFT, right? <laughs> Yes. For Marky, everything is automated. I automate everything, sometimes too well. Well, it's good to have you in the Jenkins project, which is about automation. So, yeah, in principle, it's something we can do. Yeah, I think that just configuring uh, uh, EFFT for um, LinkedIn and the same for Facebook because, uh, wouldn't hurt. So, uh, let's just do it. And if you have any other ideas how we could use LinkedIn, uh, why not? I put something like get a contributor job opening, but yeah, I'm not sure whether it's possible. Uh, but if not, why not? Excellent. Yeah, thanks, Oleg. Yeah. So just a minor thing, but yeah, so for me, it's rather a playground for FFT, to be honest, but I think that uh, I will get it over the line well, again after the JSOC submission deadline, because right now a significant part of my capacity goes there. And yeah, five items in Jenkins score. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I believe that covers all the topics we had targeted today. Anything else that we need to discuss? All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll end the meeting and send the record, post the recording. Thanks a bunch. Have a good one. See you on.